Hi, as you can see, I've got two amazing guests here with me right now, and this is not the official announcement for High Altitude Potatoes, unfortunately, that will be coming. But what this is, is Jennifer Ryla and Brandy Hadfield. Um, you can see Brandy wasn't in Nexium, but you might be fooled and they're lanyard up. Between the three of us, we have spent 23 and a half years in multi-level marketing, and uh, we are all out now of multi-level marketing cults. And we've all spoken out, and we do it in like different ways, different podcasts, different podcast documentaries, creating content, giving speeches in Washington. What we're going to be talking about in this video, which Brandy had put this uh, amazing template together, and, there, and Brandy and Jen are going to be doing most of the talking during this video. But we're going to be talking about attraction marketing, what it is, how we used attraction marketing when we were in multi-level marketing. Um, and we're going to be looking at some examples, what people in like these MLM participants are using, recruiting tactics, um, what happened when we woke up, from MLM and got out and then give you some tips for recognizing red flags and advice for you as well. And so with that, please introduce yourself, Jen, we could start with you. All right, I have not been um, present on social media in regard to multi-level marketing or even speaking out in over a year. So uh, this is kind of, it's, oh, it's a surreal experience and I'm so like, I don't want to be like, I'm so excited, happy and grateful, but I am really thankful to be doing it with the two of you. Um, I was involved in, with Arbon for eight and a half years and I got recruited when I was pregnant with my second baby and I really fell hard um, <laughs> for, the, for the attention that I got. Um, and I think that was a major thing that just really sucked me in the, from the beginning. I was just looking for like somebody to take care of me. I was a new mom. I was pregnant. I was a social worker. I was used to taking and caring for other people. And before I knew it, like all of my time and energy was consumed with being the best Arbonne consultant I could be. Um, to the point where I invested tens of thousands of dollars into network marketing coaches, out business coaches, until finally in 2022, I woke up and got out and began speaking out. And I spoke out consistently for about a year and a half. Um, and then I took a much needed break from social media. And here I am because I think this work is important. I still want to keep doing it, but just kind of learn, relearning how to like exist in the world, <laughs> which is sounds so weird, uh, but it's true. Jen, and, I was talking, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna, I just wanted to say that I was talking to this guy who um, runs a, an organization called InfoCult in Montreal, Canada. And we had a, a Zoom meeting and he was saying, remember that you devoted yourself to a cause for so many years to like, just to have awareness that you're not devoting yourself and so hard again. Um, so to be just aware of that. So, I mean, we need to take breaks sometimes. This can yeah. Break. Yeah, it was a much needed mm -hmm. break, <laughs> much needed. Mm -hmm. It's been much needed. Brandy, mm -hmm. like, who are you? <laughs> I know yeah. who you are. You want to know who you are. <laughs> um, you may know me from Julie Anderson's YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> I spent, I was uh, ebbing and flowing in a commercial cult, a wellness one. We all came from like different types. Well, Arbonne's kind of wellnessy too. Um, <clears throat> for, for 10 years. And I spent about two years deconstructing and formally cut ties May of 2023. And hey, I wrote a book <laughs> called Commercial Cult, a multi-level marketing memoir. And we'll see what happens with that. It's being shopped out. And uh, awesome. I'm now a psychotherapist in clinical supervision. That's a bit about me. Thank you so much. This is, it's just, I think it's um, so important to show people how, when you do start to speak out in any way that you can about multi-level marketing, especially if you've been posting a lot prior, 
of being on social media, how it takes over your life. And like how you said, Brandy, about it's like being devoted to a cause. It's really hard to unwire that. And Jen is a really, it's a real, you're a real inspiration for me for getting off social media. <laughs> I always say I want to, I need time off social media and then I'm like right back on. So, <laughs> so I really appreciate you doing this. So um, we're going to, the first topic is going to be about attraction marketing and what is attraction marketing. So Brandy, would you like to like take this part over this topic over? Sure. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about this because um, it pisses me off <laughs> uh, because nobody ever talks about what, like you don't see on anybody's social media feed what the job actually is. So I feel like this is a must watch for anybody who's been potentially recruited into or is about to be recruited into to know what does the job actually look like, us three coming from three totally different MLMs, how it's pretty much the same. So we can expose what the job is because the job sucks. And attraction marketing depicts the complete opposite false reality. And so apparently, I don't know if this is true, but this guy claims to have created attraction marketing in like 2004, I think. And the whole idea, I'm not even going to tell you what his name is or what the book is because ever since I looked it up, now I'm getting all these freaking ads popping up <laughs> for this <laughs> attraction marketing courses. So just don't. Um, but his idea was to turn the hunter into the hunted so that people would start being like magnetized to the network marketing professional because they live such an amazing life and we could magnetize them to us. However, the reality is that it's painting a false picture that's not true and doesn't show the reality whatsoever. It's an illusion. It is an illusion. Did you have anything that you wanted to add, Jen? Yeah, I, I mean, I think a lot of it was just being told from the beginning that you weren't just selling products. This was a lifestyle and you were part of like a lifestyle brand. And so you needed to show your lifestyle. And I don't know that, I mean, like that, that image of what that was, it was so convoluted because like one moment you were told, um, you know, you need to be vulnerable. You need to share like your struggles. And then the next, it was like, you need to be happy, excited, and grateful. And I like swayed so much in between the two, like, wanting to like build real authentic connection. But when you're always talking to people like online and you're told like, share your struggles. And then when, and then the, the goal is always to get them to join your business. It's, it can't ever be authentic. And I feel like attraction marketing is it gets warped into like this, be the best version of yourself. But really what marketing is, is you're trying to pull the people that need what you have. But what you'd get taught in MLM is like create a problem that doesn't exist and you be the solution for it. Um, and I really, it took, I mean, it took me eight and a half years to realize that and that's fine, but, um, I like had to had to navigate. I mean, do I show up as a mom? Do I show up as of this? I don't I feel uncomfortable showing my kids, but my upline is telling me to show my kids. Um, I'm actually not making the money yet, but they keep telling me fake it until I make it. So maybe I should act like I have a lot of money um, or some diet. Sometimes you just don't feel like showing your face online. And Julie, I know you can speak to this. I mean, I was doing a video or a post having to be excited or happy every single day for, I would say at least six of those eight and a half years. Um, and before we get into looking at a couple of examples of attraction marketing from like two multi-level marketing, current multi-level marketing participants, and I'm just gonna like hide their identity and just, we can kind of like analyze this. I'd like to hear both your perspectives on this, especially knowing what you know now after having been in multi-level marketing for so long, and then now on the outside, identifying the manipulative tactics. Um, I would like, cause there's people that are gonna be watching this that are like, okay, 
You had said that they were wearing lanyards. And what is with this purple sash? What, 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 what is this? So, um, Brandy, can you start talking about like what, what you're wearing, why you're wearing it? And then we'll talk to like Jen and then Jen's got a, like a lot. It's what like, are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, what are you wearing? What are it's you like, wearing? It's like an award show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm wearing white in the honor of, what do they call it now? It's not the purity party, but... <laughs> They don't call it pure, the white I think party. it's pure vibe. Oh, pure vibe. It, it changed from <laughs> it changed from the white party to the pure vibe party. That I, I mean, like at least when I it's been a couple of years, so I don't know, but okay. So yeah, we always at, at at conference twice a year and any other like major event, you would get a lanyard and all this like bling. And I'm not wearing my actual name tag, but I have these these stars as well to recognize bullshit. <laughs> and then I, when I became like a, an official leader, I was um, adorned this purple sash and a bouquet. And I was able to walk across the stage in front of thousands of people and say, Brandy Hadfield, <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> Team Nutrition Tenacity. <laughs> And then keep walking so that I could get a taste for that. <laughs> and um, was it worth it? <laughs> like at the time? <laughs> Do you uh, remember like how you felt walking across the stage? Yeah, because that I was love bombed like crazy that whole weekend. And then, and then people like were people that weren't even in my team would just be like, you look beautiful. And so they were like, like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never been seen like this and felt so surrounded with so much love, but it's commodified. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, you're buying into this false, they don't love you really. They don't know you. They love what you represent, the hope and, and all of that, as you find out when you leave. I didn't know if maybe you were completely <laughs> underwhelmed. Like, oh, I did all that for this to, to no. say my name and do my. Okay, so there. Or there's... if it was like a like a really um, excited feeling still pulsing uh, through you. Okay, so the very first conference I ever went to, I remember feeling like majorly underwhelmed, but also like like stifling that and feeling like. I need to make this what I want it to be. So like purposely putting on the lens of, I need to get from this what I was promised or else like I wasn't ready for that illusion to be, it's like the, already such a sunk cost already because of the thousands of yeah. dollars you're going to be there and all the arrangements and everything. At this point, like that milestone, I did feel excited. However, <clears throat> I think I told you guys about this personal development opportunity that I qualified for, which was something that I was looking forward to even more because it was actually going to be, I thought, like growth and personal development. And it was with this, I don't know if I should say your name, but somebody that everybody knows as a researcher in shame, uh, name was attached to it. And I was like, wow, I, I actually like hustled so hard to find that I had to pay money <laughs> for this personal development that I earned and then it it just was so underwhelming and i was like oh like that was a, that was like my biggest underwhelming like i was anticipating something and i was so disappointed it was just like fuck i gotta i gotta like actually consciously pretend this is amazing mm. i i was hooked from the first gtc global training conference uh, which one of these says GTC on it? <laughs> How many do you have on there? First off, you, you got a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have the RVP one. That one's important. Um, so I remember going to the first, my first GTC, and I had, um, I was just like enamored with it all i mm -hmm. i mean i was i just thought it was the most incredible thing it was like a concert it was like a party it was like so fun 
And I just wanted to have this feeling all the time. And it was just so weird that I was like calling home to my husband, like telling him like my hopes and my dreams. And I, you know, going back to the hotel and like, I just like ate it up like hook, line and sinker and just made it like, I was like, everybody has to go next year. Mm -hmm. And the only one, I mean, and I was like that every year until I, until I left. I mean, ironically, I promoted, I promoted, I, I still say that I like got to the RVP level during the pandemic. So I never walked the stage, even when I like was at this really tippy top level. Um, I did go to the white party or I mean the pure vibe party, <laughs> but I, um, what I was going to say is the only one that I remember feeling a little uneasy at was the one that I brought my daughter to who was mm -hmm. three months old and you are pushed immensely to bring your kids, infants, babies, doesn't matter if you're pregnant. I'm sure you guys all heard that. And then what a thing that Arbon did was they took all the pregnant women and they got a picture and um, and they actually like had them come up on the stage. We didn't get to walk the stage, but I had my youngest daughter, she was three months old and there was a picture of me and I'm like front and center in the photo. And maybe I can send it to you, Julie, and you could put it up in the, but, and maybe just block out her face, my yes. daughter's face. But there's a picture of me and I'm like, with my baby. And that photo was plastered on the wall at Arbonne's home office. So then when I earned a trip to tour Arbonne's home office the following year, me and my youngest are like this huge mural on the wall. I'm assuming it's not there anymore. <laughs> but so then I took a picture next to it, next to myself, like, ah, you know, and it was like this weird thing. But when I took my daughter, except for that moment, I was so out of it because I was a new mom. I mm -hmm. felt so weird about having her there with me. I was like, as soon as I got there, I'm like, why did I take an infant to Vegas? Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of idea was this? I, I had like, I was carrying like three diaper bags, a stroller, a car, you know, like a car seat. Walking through the MGM Grand, and of course I've got like teammates helping me, but that was the only GTC where, I mean, I don't, I have no recollection of it except that picture of me just like manically holding my baby. And it's so weird to see that now. But mm -hmm. I mean, other than that, I, I loved every single bit of it. <laughs> my first conference, my, my son, who's now 13, was just 14 months old. Um, and then I took, I took my kids to every conference until at one point they were like, stop, like we don't want to go. So, wow. yeah, so my husband and my two kids told me, like, we don't want to go, go by yourself. This <laughs> <sucks."> <laughs> so the last two conferences, I went on my own. Yeah, good for them, eh? <laughs> this is a topic that I haven't heard discussed that much, um, mm -hmm. coming outside of being involved in multi-level marketing. And, and I just want to say thank you both so much for just taking this head on about being a mom and how like the children in our families are being used in multi-level marketing as well, because it's the shame is used that your you know, your kids are your excuse. They should be your why, you know, you need to keep doing this. And yeah. then it's used so heavily that people don't want to, it gets so uncomfortable to talk about. Like it's so, mm -hmm. it's so oppressive that shame. So just thank you so much for, for both like 
addressing these things right at the beginning of this, you know, as mm -hmm. we're talking about this attraction marketing. I, I hadn't really uh, like looked at head on or really you just saying that, like, like repeating it back for us as we shared it um, was affirming and, and, and strengthened like something within me that was a, an anger towards the fact that these organizations, these cults specifically try to recruit mothers primarily is like a big target demographic because so, you know, we're obviously in a position of transition and vulnerability, but then the, 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 the whole, it's just extra, it feels to me extra evil and insidious and um, inauthentic that they're promoting this lifestyle of freedom and choice when it's taking from us the most precious, I hate to say precious because that's a word that I heard a lot. Um, your children are so precious. Um, but they're precious times in our child's development. Like they're formative years for establishing attachment and and we are we have this immense pressure upon us when it's already a very you know even if you are staying at home and not having a side hustle or a side gig it's a intense time and then you can't you fuck like you can't express any challenges that you're having because you have to depict hashtag blessed all the time um we're spinning every possible problem postpartum um anxiety um you know ha having trouble making ends meet as and pretending like acting as if this is the answer to that um that's a lot to undo afterwards when you leave not only not only feeling like you lost time but that you have to repair i mean we could i mean this could be a whole separate video yeah, yeah. um it, it's uh there's no I way that <laughs> no way no way no way like the biggest lie is that you can you can be a present mom and work your way up to the top yeah. one percent in the pyramid scheme there it is the biggest one of the top three biggest lies there's no way it cannot be done yeah and i Press like i've spoken <laughs> i've spoken to both of you about this i believe but now having a teenager and she is very aware of like if i take a picture of her she's like where are you posting that and i'm like i'm not posting it well if you do post it let me see it and obviously she couldn't do that when she was younger and there are hundreds of pictures that i put up of her and i i know she was little and and whatever and i know things now that i didn't know then i'm not trying to blame myself but i do think about that and how much i put my my young daughters out there in the name of i don't even know like i wasn't even i wasn't getting paid per post even yeah. though even though they say pay to get paid to post it's not true at all mm -hmm. Speaking yeah. of attraction marketing, I mean, it's just, it's just a lie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's like anything you talk about, you can get like heavy real fast, right? Yes. So we'll like, like just shift gears here and we'll like lighten it up a little <laughs> before we go diving into the deep darkness again. Oh, he's back. The juicy fan fave flavored grapefruit is back in stock, but start the car. She's a limited edition and we'll go quick. Who knew I'd go to university for five plus years <laughs> Teach it all. Oh, dance on the internet with a box of fizz. I can confirm I never thought this would be me, but I can also confirm that I'm 100% living in alignment and that feels better than any degree, title, or pension perk. And I earn more than I ever could have if I stayed the corporate course. Do you make the post, start again, dance on the internet? Oh, do you make the post, start again, dance on the internet? Life's too short. Oh, and drink fizz. I can attest from personal experience. It'll make you a happier human. You All can right. also dance on the internet and expose multi-level marketing as a commercial call. Is there any information about like what degree? I mean, like she could be, 
I always think she, like she could be really I helping the too. sick or like teaching young children or like doing something. Not, I'm not, I don't want to like shame. Yeah. I did this for eight and a half years, but like it, gosh, it's like, I wonder what her degree was in and like what she was doing. She, she worked in healthcare. Um, oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's pretty vague on her website, but she worked in healthcare, okay. I think as some sort of counselor in healthcare. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not a counselor as in a psychotherapist, but like, um, okay. I really don't know. It's really big. It's always like, it, you always have to go all in, right? It's like, this was, yeah. I was this, the testimonial, yeah. I was this, and now I decided to, it's full time. And then it's, I thought this was I thought this was a good reel because the focus just gets on the products. You know, this is, it's just these, it's, it's like Kool-Aid, you know, mm -hmm. it's the drink. Yeah. He's drinking the Kool-Aid, drinking the flavor aid, you know, to be more accurate. But it, it just, it's just sad for me to see this mm -hmm. because the longer that I'm out, it's like all multi-level marketing companies are the same. All of us, when we're in these, all of us participants, we all say the same things. It is this, it is a cult playbook and it's yeah. just sad, you know? Um, and also when they're recruiting, they don't say ditch your pension. They say you can do this in the stolen moments of your life, you know, right. So that you just take that little, make that little micro decision as I saw in one of their other reels, <laughs> that little micro decision to change my protein powder, which then led to, you know, they're saying the quiet part out loud. It's just like the introductory personality quiz that they do with Scientology. It's just, they want you to make that micro decision so that you can make the next one and the next one and the next one and get deeper and deeper in until you're then shouting from the mountaintop that pensions and degrees are for chumps and Arbonne is where it's at. Yeah, that's such a great point. That's such a good point, Diane. <laughs> that because, be, just because you know, if they were like, would you like to give up your pension? Like nobody would join. <laughs> or would you like to throw away all the money you invested in a degree? <laughs> and like the on the job training that you have working in healthcare, like nobody would say yes to that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that because there's another clip where there's a woman where she's talking about her pension. It's just so, it's so funny that you said that. Um, are you ready? I wonder to if there was some sort of challenge that Arbon put out about. It, it could be. I don't know. You can to tell see. when they all start posting. The I know they thing. all copy each other, but <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> to the hardworking single mamas wanting more for yourself and your kiddos, wondering when things will get better, hoping you'll get to build a life you're proud of. I was you. Trust me, you'll be fine. Uh, I started my network marketing business in 2019, right after I became a single mom, because I wanted an extra 200 to $500 a month. So I wouldn't have to live paycheck to paycheck and actually be able to buy my son new clothes and maybe one day bring him to Disneyland. Once I saw that this business off, once I saw what this business offered and what was possible, I decided I was all in. I saw all these other people doing it and I thought, why not me? I knew that if I wanted a better life for my son and then it was going to be up to me to make that happen. I was working more than full-time hours navigating, but she couldn't possibly be working more than full-time now, right? Navigating a divorce, dealing with the devastation that my family fell apart and I would no longer get to see my son every day. It was heavy. I leaned hard into the community and into personal development so that I could become the woman that I knew I was capable of and to build the life I'd always dreamed of for Hunter and I. Because of my choice to give this business a chance and be all in, it completely changed the trajectory of both of our lives. I bought us a home. We've gone to Disneyland multiple times. I can buy him new clothes whenever I want. And I get to be there for school drop-offs and pickups. And I get to help other people build their goals so build their businesses and help them reach their goals and dreams every day. So if you're struggling, I promise you that anything is possible and that things can and will get better. Let's go for notice. 
that all of the people whose dreams she's helping build are not in the comment section saying, I mean, there might be one or two, there might be one or two sometimes. I always look at that. Like how many, how many people in the comments are like, thank you. I'm so grateful. You did help me build my dream. Now I've taken my son to Disneyland multiple times. There's a lot of people saying like, oh, I want that too. Or a lot of co-leaders in the upper echelon being like, yeah, girl, yeah, girl, yeah, girl. It's just uh, interesting to, to, to yeah. well, that. right. And also that the dream is always like to get to the top. How mm -hmm. is it that 20, I, I mean, once I started to piece things together, I, I remember one of my thoughts was like, how is it there are 20,000 ambitious women in this room, hardworking, ambitious women, because you, I mean, you can say that about people in MLM. They're they're hardworking. They want they a lot of them get into it be, because they want to help people. They believe that they're helping people. Um, how is it that twenty thousand ambitious, hardworking women all have the dream to be an MVP? How come there's not a dream to find the cure for cancer? How come there's not a dream to write a sitcom? How come there's not a dream to um, you know, be the next Joanna Gaines or something like it's always to be to the top of Arbon. And like when you have that many different personalities, if if it's not a cult, right, mm -hmm. then that should not everyone shouldn't have the same dream. Well, in, so in the group that I was in, my up, 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 up line <laughs> had a had a a nonprofit that was used for attraction marketing. And can you guess what it was about? But so sex about trafficking. Health? Sex, no, sex trafficking. Oh. Um, so. But you can't do that until you get to the top, right? And have so all the money can, to do you, the dream. So you can, you can though, go there, volunteer, raise money for it, like more unpaid labor mm -hmm. and show that you're part of something beyond smoothies. So that was part of the attraction marketing spin that, that they also have that in other cults as well. Like it's like a front. If you, if you look closer and you look like who's on the board of directors for this nonprofit and everybody is in a leadership role within the same cult, um, that's, wow. that's it's weird too, because I feel as though like, well, I'm, I'll speak I'll, again, I'm speaking for myself, my things that I wanted for myself, like slowly began to morph. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden I wanted to be a coach. <laughs> I never had wanted to be a coach until I joined MLM. I'm not saying that I don't like you know, listening to people, offering advice, or, you know, being a good friend, like the, all things that coaches, I, I like sports, I, you know, all things that coaches are, like are involved in coaching. But I think that that's weird, too. It's, it's like, then the dream shifts yeah. to like, like I want to be a coach, yeah, or a that's mentor, whatever you want to call it, or a light worker or I don't know. <laughs> that was that was one of the things that I would notice is that these top to be top leaders would then go into like having an additional revenue stream of coaching. And I'm like, yeah. but they're supposed to do that as uplines. But I guess they're so good that they're in so much demand that they are needing to coach other people. But it like it was one of those major cognitive dissonance things. And then that became my goal as well. But in the meantime, I had to just coach for free and people were seeking me out for coaching and I was, and they were not in my downline. And I was, and I went to my upline to be like, okay, like basically needing help with a boundary. Like I only have, I have finite time in a day. I'm a mom <laughs> and these other people are wanting my coaching. And I was basically told like, we're all in the same mission. We're all a family. So I had to coach them. Prioritize your own team first, of course, but so, okay. Right, because once you get into, uh, 
once you've proven your commitment to like some of the upper echelon, right? You get asked to do training calls. Yeah. yeah. And that's more like was a there's a whole thing of unpaid labor. And then so you're creating a training or whatever to do these calls, which then just gets pushed out. Monday, then. It's, con <laughs> it's content you've created that mm -hmm. you're not making any money. You're not monetizing. Um because it's all for the greater good, but it's actually, it's not really get, it's not really helping your business. It's helping your uplines business. Yeah. Okay. Before you even start though, the, the screen name, um, mine was from Jen to Zen because oh. it was showing like the transformation of me being Jen apparently to this like <laughs> Zen mind body wellness coach. So that Mine was my boss method. name. Mine is the, the dream method. The dream of method. <laughs> yeah. Diet, rest, exercise, attitude, and mindfulness. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. I suck. You know what mine was? What? It was a shampoo printer. Shampoo <laughs> printer. <laughs> <laughs> started with like me I honestly don't normally talk about like political things anything that'll ruffle feathers I just like keep the peace and I don't really say on here like what what's on my mind with stuff but like I'm just sort of past that like I like swearing is kind of one thing like I swear in here all the time in my day-to-day -day life I swear I've been swearing since I was probably like seven and when I meet new people I really try to like tone it down and not swear and now I like don't even really do that because I'm trying to just live authentically as me and that really is authentically me and I'm not trying to offend anyone by you know speaking that way but my parents never told me not to swear. I never got in trouble for swearing because when I swear, it's not like an aggressive swearing. And it doesn't fucking swear aggressively, you guys. It's really fucking okay. <laughs> Let her fucking rip. <laughs> oh, so I just feel for her. She is like, this is like a disclaimer for her life. She is just apologetically like, this whole thing is just an apology mm. for like, I don't know if if she is i i like feel this so much like because i didn't swear um i was an aggressive swearer and i did the opposite of what she's saying i had uplines say i really wish you wouldn't swear as much you know you're representing arbon and yeah. you know you're representing our brand and and you know i i just i i my upline was older and she was like, you know, I think of you as like my, a daughter. And I just, you know, maybe that sounds motherly, but you can get your point across without swearing. So I like dulled that. And mm -hmm. she is really struggling here. This is my perception with like, I want it. I'm told to be myself, but like, I don't know if I'm going to get criticized for this. Are they going to say, this is why I'm not promoting is because I'm swearing. And she's trying to just like find her way. So she's just like apologizing for, I don't even know what she's like saying she's doing this, but has she sworn once? I think that it's like, uh, they, they I don't know that they have to create so much content. And I find that these particularly, uh, and most especially with our bomb, but I, I, maybe I haven't watched enough Amara or whatever, uh, are so long winded. And I think that they're just like st stream of consciousness. Yeah. And whatever's coming out and maybe she's apologizing because she's just a blah, 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 before she gets to her like, uh, controversial point and then making yeah. sure she brings in the fizz while she, you know, yep. Casually, I just happened to be thirsty <laughs> while I decided to talk to you about who the fuck cares if you're swearing. I don't care. I, I love her ponytail. Yeah. Like seriously, that braid is gorgeous. <laughs> I, I, I feel really she's fighting it. for herself.
I feel she's fighting yeah. for herself that she, this is like her, yeah. I think this is like a moment of cognitive mm -hmm. distance. I think this, this is, yep. is going to be one of those things that she remembers where like, you're told to be authentic. You're told to be you. And then also she's being told that you can't do this and trying to find a way. It's like, I don't swear aggressively. I've been swearing since I'm seven. Cause it's just kind of like saying like, fuck you. Like, this is who yeah. I am. This is what I want to yeah. do. But at the same time, it's like bringing in the fist sticks. Like this, mm -hmm. I think it's just showing her cult identity trying uh, to squash her identity it's like they're battling that's what uh, i see i'm getting goosebumps you know exactly get out get the fuck out <laughs> i know she she i i don't know yeah go okay. <laughs> it's not because i'm like mad it's just like a part of the conversation if that makes sense you know um so Anyway, <laughs> most of the time, most of the time, that's how it is. So the unpopular opinion that I want to talk about today was um, pensions. And so I have I have a corporate job. I have benefits and pensions and all that sort of stuff. So today I, in the mail, I got my um, like summary or whatever of what my pension will be if I work until I'm 71 years old. So right now I'm 32. The average age that people live is 82 okay so if i work until i'm 71 i'll live maybe another 10 years i mean hopefully i live till like i'm like 100 but like when you look at like the math of that that's not a lot of time to be living with like your pension money right and so the unpopular opinion that i have i'm gonna sign out here so anyway if i work until i'm 71 the earliest i can retire is like 55 you get like hardly any money so the like maximum amount of money that i will get from a pension if i continue doing the same thing for the next however many fucking years that is um the amount that i will get is three thousand six hundred eighty four dollars a month and i'm like what a fucking scam because like <laughs> i like it's just mind boggling to me that people want to work that long for that little amount of money in return when they like. You saw I said something, Brandy? Yeah. My, the most money I ever made in a month as a top 1.6% income earner was $3,959 after expenses works out to $2,785. Uh, and that was after working years for losing money or like $3 an hour after expenses years. And that was very close to when I woke up. So $3,600 pension for living your, you know, your life. It's shocking that she's framing this as a scam. And I think yeah. this is gonna give a lot, like it, this is really showing, this is gonna show people how indoctrinated people in yeah, multi-level yeah. marketing companies are in particularly Arbonne in this case, where it's like really believing that she's had this, it's not even an opinion. This is, this is indoctrination yeah. where she's framing it in this way that after like whatever, 71 years old, then she can actually live her life. Then she'll be free. But with Arbonne, she can maybe achieve something where then she can, what, you're not going to be working as hard as everybody else in every other pyramid scheme where there's, you're going to then just relax and do what, like it, like no, calling yeah. it a scam, like working 40 hours a week for 40 years to take home 40% of what you, whatever that line, that other thought terminating cliche is. This is so scary to you see. You can never relax in a pyramid scheme because it will crumble as soon as you do. You have to, you yep. can, there's always this fear. But no. she's just talking about her pension. She's not talking about the labor she's getting paid for. But right now she's doing unpaid labor for Arbon. Mm -hmm. Um and it's like striking that she's someone somewhere probably told her this and she's regurgitating yeah. it. You probably saw it in that other post. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, this, you know, picture painted of like taking your child to Disney World multiple times and as if you, but what's not shown is that there's probably a shit ton of content created at Disneyland because you can never stop. Because if you stop, that, that, I mean, that, there, I guess there are some like founders or, or people who got in at the very, 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 very beginning who are like the top 0.03% who don't do as much because they've built such a massive thing. But that is not anything that you can bank on, whereas you can actually bank on a pension. And as you said, you know that you're getting paid for your labor the entire time that you're working there. 
Like it does not make any sense to compare one this to the other. You could take the money that you are earning in your paid labor in your job and invest it yeah. in a plan that would build over time versus with Arbon, they they try to make you think that you're investing, you just put it back into your business in the beginning. But like there's no training on like investments or any like because you're not getting paid you're not you never know what your paycheck is going to be mm -hmm. you ne like you have the compensation plan you're fucked nobody knows what it means it's always changing and they can change it at any time and i know like people in mlms wa who watch this would say like oh well your boss you know you're they'll fire you and they don't care but um it's the same in an mlm like it is they the the company just like rodan and fields and some of these other companies can also change at any time and so if just look at making money it's there's always a risk involved yeah. like this is not risk free and mm -hmm. and it's almost like when you're in and you get that indoctrination you just start to believe that it is so foolproof. How could anyone say no to this? I mean, look at how dumb I was with this pension. And then everything's a scam because you're just, you live in this constant state of fear. Like healthcare is a scam. My therapist is a scam. Um, like my pension is a scam. Everything is a scam except the thing that you are obsessed with. She didn't, she doesn't take into account her job, what she's earning right now, Jen. When you said that, I was like, that's that's it. She just is talking about her pension. She is not even looking at what she's making. And that to me is terrifying. She, yeah. It's like, this shows people how this is a cult. Like just like many other yeah. examples of what the fuck is going on with Arbon. But just this, as she's talking and then doing the the fizz in her drink like it's so forced it's trying to you know you, you know we, we all got training like this that just do it it's so mm -hmm. natural people mm -hmm. are just going to be so curious you know and be like, oh what is it that you're drinking as you share this like wildly unpopular and controversial opinion being your authentic self you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> like and just i think the point of doing this is to look at these things with a critical eye like don't get caught up in the like it don't get caught up in like the lifestyle that they want like all the smoke and mirrors with the fizz and the like cute hat and the braid and the nice thick hair and the like little like all the things that she wants you to see like look at my life i'm so perfect i'm fit i'm white-ish i'm you know like this is and i'm not saying any of those things are correct i am saying that this is kind of the mindset you get into mm -hmm. if you look across the board at arbon um i went to everything when i was in arbon and there was very little diversity or like it was everybody walked talked looked the same what i mean is look at these things with a critical eye because we don't have all the information. We don't know how much she makes at this job. We don't know if she has healthcare benefits. We we don't know how much she's making in her MLM. We don't know how long she's been doing it. We don't know what she's doing every day. She's talking about this very small thing to lure you in. And I don't know if she knows that she's being manipulative, but she's being coached to do this. And there's so much that we don't know. And so when someone presents you with a compensation plan or tells you about their paycheck or how their life went from, you know, horrible to transformational, like you don't have all the information. I have just switched my mindset so much because like, you know, my parents and society tells you to like get the, you know, corporate job, get the benefits, get the pension. It's so important. And now I'm at the point where I'm just like, you want me to work that long in a job that doesn't fulfill me to make that little much amount of money like why like that makes zero sense to me it makes way more sense to me to be betting on myself become an entrepreneur and then get disposable income invest that into real estate or whatever else and i totally understand that this might come across to people and this is where it might ruffle some feathers that like i'm like not grateful for like having a bench uh 
benefit and pensions and stuff like that and like there's so many people in the world that don't have that and it's not that I'm like not grateful for it it's just that it does not align with me anymore like oh I God. like it just doesn't and so what if somebody from her work sees this like, this is so dangerous like, I never thought that she was ungrateful for what she has either. You know, there's always that, like, I have to be grateful. Yep. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Like, I, I, that's a really good point. I never even thought of that. If somebody were at work, her job being like, what is she doing here? Like, I don't, whatever her role is, it's just, what, what are you doing? I mean, yeah. hopefully they know, you know, that she's involved in a multi-level marketing fraud, a cult, that this is what they, people behave because, it's wild how she said that the only way she can make disposable income is through Arbonne. She's ignoring any kind of disposable income that she's making from her job or the possibility of getting a second job or any, it's only Arbonne. Yeah. And betting on betting on myself slash joining a multi-level marketing, joining a multi-level marketing company is not betting on yourself. And that's exactly what they want you to think because whenever anybody doubts you, they want you to think they don't believe in me because you and the commercial cult become one. So if somebody says, you know what, I love you, you have a great job with a pension, you know, if you're not feeling satisfied, maybe there's some way we can work on that. Like maybe there's an EAP uh, program at her, at, her, at her job, or maybe she's um, burning out and there's a way to, to manage that. But instead it's like, no, it doesn't align with me, Arbonne all the way. And that's betting on me. And oh, it's not. <laughs> and the black, the black or white, like I would 1000% yeah. rather live a fulfilled life and build an empire because there's no possible way you could have a fulfilling life with a job. You know, mm -hmm. there's no way any nurse or doctor or um, like, esthetician or therapist or any number of teacher, any number of jobs out there, there's no way those people are fulfilled at all in their work. I mean, and it's just, it's really, it's asinine. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people that get up every single day and work so hard um, and honestly love what they do. Mm -hmm. and live very fulfilling lives in a job. And awesome. I think you, you, get, you get to this point where you think there's no way anybody could be fulfilled with a job. Uh, before I forget, I just wanted to mention like, um, you know, working for Uber, for example, would be the same category as working in an MLM, like being a, an Uber Eats. Let's say I work for Uber Eats. And it's like, it's amazing because I have flexibility. I set my own hours. I don't actually work for Uber Eats. I'm just saying it <laughs> hypothetically. And I get to go outside and ride my bike in the city. And I and it's just really fun. But I'm not going on social media comparing my choice to other people's choice or comparing my potential to a pension because what message is she exactly trying to get across? I'm about to bring a financial Boaz into your life. Why? Why is she sharing this unpopular opinion? The only reason why she would be sharing it is to imply that she's found a life hack and maybe it will resonate with you and you'll want to join her in this, you know, fulfilling, aligning path. <laughs> um, otherwise, there's no, nobody does that. Like nobody in any other job does that. Nobody says, no. I'm, a, I'm a therapist. Okay. I get to work my job around my life. I get to, to set my own hours. Um, I, my paycheck is a reflection of how, how many lives I'm impacting. Like I'm, nobody does that. I'm in a union. I work for IATSE and I like nobody talks about their work like that unless they're recruiting you and find so red yeah. flag red flag such a great point like and no nurses aren't bashing teachers and teachers aren't yeah. bashing you know it's there because there's not that because quite frankly 
there's you'd have to recruit more people than the population of the entire earth okay and there's this scarcity mindset that gets even though you you're telling yourself you're thinking abundantly but you live in a constant state of competition i was in arbon in an extremely small town and i recruited people right off the bat which is the only reason that i did anything but after a while i do remember like now in hindsight feeling competitive with other arbon consultants in the area because it's like there's only so many people and if i stick this person under this person then is this person going to get mad at me and but if there really is abundance then it shouldn't be like that but it isn't you learn very quickly like if i don't keep these people around the campfire and hope that they catch a spark then who the hell am i going to get to do this with me because like i am i can't keep up with the amount of people i'm losing versus whom i have to keep recruiting and it's not like that in any other job. You don't get paid based on how many other people are nurses in your hospital with you. Yeah. And it's and it's That's another a good thing point. that I want to highlight is the magical thinking of like, um, you know, abundance mindset. Um, you know, I'm magnetizing this into my life. I'm man like manifestation. All of those concepts that are quite popular in multi level marketing. Um, that's a red flag because you don't need to speak that way. It's, 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 it is a thought terminating cliche and it, in it's, it's role is to make the inductee question their reality and go, wait a second, what I'm worried about this valid concern, insert valid concern here is just me self-sabotaging. Ah! <laughs> and so, because the person telling you this to you is a charismatic beautiful, has it all together. They've been love bombing you. They've been priming you. You, that, that, that is the same framework as any abusive relationship. And now you're, now you're taking that as fact that, oh, I'm, it's not that <laughs> uh, the market is saturated. It's that I have a lack mindset. So I've just got to keep repeating this affirmation over and over again and banging my head against a wall. And if, and if I eventually quit, then I'm just going to feel ashamed about myself. And I guess my mindset continually got in the way to my own detriment and the end. And that's where these cults are devastating to a person's self-esteem. Not, not to mention the financial devastation. That's just the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion. And there's always somebody that you can talk to, to talk mm -hmm. you out of your um, objection, right? Because the, so when I was recruited, I got on a third party call. So like a three way call with somebody who was supposedly like a Wall Street executive. Mm -hmm. And when I did my interview for the Dream podcast, I remember Jane Marie asking me, what is What do you mean a Wall Street executive? What does she do? <laughs> like she works on Wall Street. She's like, Wall Street is like, what does that mean? And I was like, I have no idea. I just heard <laughs> Wall Street executive. And she's like, you know, that could mean like she literally just lives on Wall Street. Like, cause she is like the way she, or she works. I don't know. I didn't have all the information again. And, but she was like, I'm a, I'm a former wall street executive. So right from the get go, I assume she's got this like business acumen, this financial mm -hmm. acumen that I like measly, this measly peon of a person in this small town, Michigan couldn't possibly have, um, that. And then it's like, um, if I, if I hadn't, if say, if I had questioned that, like, so in hindsight, I think like, what if I would have asked more questions there would have, it wouldn't have mattered because there would have been somebody else for me to talk to. Oh, you know, you got to talk yeah. to my friend, Sarah, she has two kids just like you, yeah. or you have to talk to my friend, um, Teresa, 
who, you know, she was a teacher. She was working as many, it, there's always somebody else who's going to talk you out of it. So I say all that to, to, I always think about that for myself. It's like, there's nothing, there's nothing like that I could have said because you're taught to be relentless. You're taught to yeah. go for no. You're taught to just like rail it into the follow up until they die yeah. and find a way to get them in. So a yeah. lot of people say, will say yes, just because to get the person to stop asking. <laughs> so we can agree to disagree on this. And I, if this is like something that's super valuable to you and aligns for you, then that's a hundred percent great for you. And I'm if your pension, if having a pension and benefits align with you, that's totally okay, but it doesn't align for me. <laughs> it's so sad. Like, I mean, this is something, you know, just, in, and from what both of you have been saying, there has been no discussion about, um, the money like being made it's all about the connection it's all about this other manipulation this um mm. the love bombing really being seen then feeling that yeah. you can express yourself authentically and then you have the ftc that's like well you know what if multi-level marketing companies were more truthful in their income disclosure statements you know maybe we could pass some regulation and that would totally solve the problem it's like it's so far off when you're no, looking no. at somebody here who has doesn't know anything about pyramid schemes or frauds or MLMs has a job has benefits has a pension and is saying I I don't want it it's like I can't it's it's not it's not aligned with me yeah. why can't you have both but you can't yeah. have both when you're in a cult yeah. it's about alignment oh my god it's just the buzz it's just buzz, buzz. it's the language right the happy for you but for me now like it's so clear to me that that is like not the path of my life like i would rather give up my pension and that like measly three thousand dollars a month to like live the life of my dreams and like build like build like what i'm building which is like this wellness like whole thing <laughs> this whole now it's everything that i'm building with like it's three thousand a month did she say that before i thought she just said three thousand she said yeah, three thousand six hundred dollars a month. Oh, okay. And it's like Rest, it's, it's measly, measly, <laughs> measly three thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I mean, people would people are like at the tippy top who make three thousand a month in MLM. Yeah. Yeah. Until that MLM shuts down or decides to just go do like an affiliate model, like with Saint and Rodan and Fields and hopefully Modair is going to be next. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> like retreats with Arbonne, with yoga, holistic nutrition, breath work, like all. Of so anyway, the reason why I think this is an unpopular opinion is because there's not a lot of people that will like have that like abundant mindset around it. And there's a reason that, you know, that a lot of businesses and self-employed people fail and you know it takes a certain level of commitment and dedication and like willingness to like step outside your comfort zone and stuff to get to those levels um and like i'm just so dedicated to like that because like that is what i'm passionate about and like that's what fills my cup and like it's like there's no other option at this point like i've seen what my life can be and i've seen like what i've been like living and I am not living in like my true purpose at all at this stage in my life. Like I'm definitely building towards it, but I'm just like, no, <laughs> like there is no chance that I will continue working corporate for the rest of my life. There's a zero chance that will happen because I, so how does she do that? Seriously. So my question is, how do you do that? But she can't say that here. She wants you to inbox her. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is like she never well, she says like Arbon retreats and but she doesn't ever say it's never like what what do you do? It's like breath work. She does breath work and stuff. Yeah. And uh, and selling fizz, I'm mixing it up and you can get your dream too. Yeah. And you just have to talk about your goals and dreams. And this is uh, this is how you get recruited into the Arbon cult is like it's so yeah. clear to me now that the pension is the true scam mm -hmm. and lie for a measly yeah. meager three thousand dollars a month. If I have to work that long, it's so clear to me now. It's like it is clear to everybody watching your content that you are in a cult. And I hope you get out. I hope if you come across this or somebody else in another multi-level marketing 
company that comes across this, maybe they're on their way out. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope that you just take time and listen to what Jen and Brandy have said and just reflect. This doesn't make any fucking sense. Why would you even need to slag a pension? Are you that desperate? Are you that not resourceful and resilient as an entrepreneur, which you're not an entrepreneur, you're not, not a business owner, but you that you need to disparage anything else in order just to build this amazing empire? That's living in scarcity. That you're dooming mm -hmm. yourself to failure if you want to like go down that twisty road of your <laughs> MLM coaching, you know? <laughs> stuff jacks me up all right I regret my life like if i got to the end of my life and i looked back and i played small like that would... anyway i don't know what i was expecting with the pension thing fucking playing small this is just you know <laughs> i honestly didn't uh, really I, like think about I it all that much I... playing small yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like playing small oh god <laughs> i now i'm like i'm this is me i'm like how small can i play yeah <laughs> I'm, just gonna, exactly. I'm just gonna hide under my desk and see how small i can play <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you know, when I was in MLM, everything seemed so unimportant and I was be so like judgmental, like just yeah. inner, you know, I'm sure yeah. everybody could feel it, but I just thought like you are, I'm so much yeah. better. I've got so much bigger yes. dreams. I thought the mundane, like the ordinary, the small things, the most meaningful things in life were not the things that I wanted. I needed something more. And now being on the outside, it's like, I don't want anybody to know anything about me. I would rather like just kind of like fade off and do what I want to do. And yet, yet here I am making all these fucking videos, but it's part of like advocacy, you know, but it's not, you know, like I can't do like, you know, selfies. This is what I'm wearing today. It's like that shit has been so played out in from multi -level but Julie, marketing. you also like you do so much meaningful content without mm -hmm. like monetization or expecting any like i mean i know that there are people that monetize i'm not i will say that it's interesting to me that like playing big even gets manipulated because what is there are so many people playing huge in this world if you will doing amazing things but don't have to go brag about it on the internet nobody mm -hmm. knows their name um they're not seeking fame or attention or followers or in you know influence or brands to reach out to them or um trying to recruit people into a, a, a pyramid scheme I, it's like what you there are tons of people playing huge that have jobs. Again, they're not mutually exclusive. It's just been like ingrained in me that like you have to get that. And so I would say for like the last year when I've really been like, okay, like, no, I'm like transitioning out of this and like I haven't put the same weight on it. Um, like now to like receive the piece of paper that says that it's like a slap in the face. You're just like, whoa, like. I do not want to work for someone else doing something I'm not passionate about for $3,000 a month. Like what a sick joke. So anyway, that's how you I feel about that. Um, you yeah. are working for that's someone That's a lie. Else. You're not working for yourself because if you were working yeah. for yourself, you would set the pricing, you would source the products, you would, um, you, you wouldn't be able to lose it all with other, somebody else's decision. Would be yours. Having an upline is worse than having a boss, in my humble opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. We can all. We disagree. No... <laughs> yeah. Well, because there's no, like in corporate, there's like an HR department. Typically, yeah. there's a union um, that protects employees. Like, if you get into it with your upline, which I did. Um, like it ain't pretty, like there's nothing to protect you. It's just like, it's, it's freaking eat or be eaten. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have happy, um, healthy conversations around it. And if we disagree, that's totally fine. But that's my, if not, no opinion. worries. Controversial. If not, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, if not, no worries. That's what I said. She's, no she's postured around her network marketing <laughs> business. She's postured around her pension. Yeah. <laughs> and the pipeline of her. 
packing them into the pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> Topic of the day. I honestly don't like doing these. I'm probably not going to ever do a controversial thing again. Maybe I will, but not for a while. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, <laughs> the little salad at the end. That yeah. was great because that was a lot of word salad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of word salad. Be... <laughs> okay, now good. there's one more piece of um, content that we could react to. All right. And we talked all about body image cycles of sabotage and comparison, because these have been the three things that have held her back in her journey of seeing success and seeing the growth that she wanted to see until she unpacked them and moved through them. And so we talked about what that looked like for her. And it started long before Arbonne, um, the cycles of sabotage and the comparison. And she, she brought that up how, when I first started on Instagram, I tried to encourage her like, show up, show up, like just start posting. Like you never know who you're going to inspire. But at that time, her comparison was thinking that she needed to be an expert in the field or she needed to look a certain way to be able to show up. And then once Arbonne entered into the scene, you all of a sudden, when you join Arbonne, it's like this thing where you're like, add, 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 and you add all these national vice presidents and all these people. But what you typically do is you find like, the demographic of people and then you add all of them in the same demographic so in your mind you think everyone looks this way everyone talks this way everyone acts this way and that isn't me so over the last four years we've worked through a lot together and as her best friend i definitely push her into growth which sometimes she doesn't always want but is receptive to and i'm so grateful that she is and last year we had a really hard conversation we talk about this in the live where i told her you are literally pushing me away and it's getting to the point where i don't know what to do anymore and like we need to to unpack this we need to get help and talk therapy is something that really does work for her it doesn't work for everyone it works for her and so basically pushed her really hard into seeing a counselor again and it did help. And so then it was like, that was the stepping stone from there. She needed the routine. She's very structure oriented. So she needed to start focusing on herself again to believe in herself again. So she started 75 heart, didn't need to complete it, but just needed that to create the structure for herself. And then muting what the accounts that trigger woman, her doing gratitude. What would this woman have done without you? With her, her best outcome? friend, I mean, best friend slash that's what this whole thing is coming around. Like, look at me. Look how amazing I am. Uh, and look at what a piece of shit this person was. Like, she's not saying that literally. Like she said, she literally pushed me. What, she pushed you? <laughs> she, but um, they all say, I mean, I was the same way. So everything I'm saying, I'm saying it as if, oh my God, that was me. So it's just she i can't believe the and we used to do this when i was involved with ray higdon's inner circle is we would share coaching stories like basically this person was a piece of shit they signed yeah. up for ray's coaching i coached them and look at them now i mean just seeing this now on this other side it is so disgusting and manipulative yeah to like the client i don't know is this like a coat this is a coach this is her situation. downline slash best friend slash client life coach client oh, my God. oh wow so her best friend is paying her um, well no oh, god that's she's so just act, she's just acting like she's just acting like her life coach as her upline oh i see I, when i when i all these things are the same like i did 75 hard i did tony robbins i started i did some therapy i because you're always looking for like what's wrong with me what's wrong with me mm -hmm. that i because your income only grows as you grow um and whenever i see these things i'm like oh my gosh we really were all in the same little circles um <laughs> like just trying to we all like there's always the same names that come up like coaches right. and yeah you know i this is such a good example of behavior information thought emotional control everything that she's mm -hmm. doing here emotion you're pushing me away like, like uh, that accusatory you're broken you need to be fixed this is the behavior that you need to change it's like even her whatever like ordering her to go to a therapist and then yeah. using that, twisting it to tie her deeper into Arbon, It's so disgusting. It's like, if you're a best friend, if you're a best friend, you, you are 
open to what your friend is saying. If they're saying, I'm just not feeling it, you're like, you respect that. And you tell me more. How are you, you know, how, you know, tell me. Yeah. And then if they're, if they say, I feel like I'm not good enough for this business or whatever, whatever it is that they say, you know, you, you're, you're just, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that it's, <laughs> A supportive friend is curious and supportive and not um, pathologizing your intuition or your feelings or your behavior. Because I did, I did this with so many relationships. Like it started with Arbon because I was always trying to recruit everybody that I was a friend with. Correct. Like mm -hmm. any, anyone I would meet, what is it? Like the, the, everybody within a certain range is, you know, prospectable. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I became a coach and went down that nightmare, I um, I would like psychoanalyze people without the training to do so. And yeah. it's like people would, I and maybe this is just what I thought, but like I felt like people came to me for advice. And it, I'm not saying I didn't sometimes give great advice or mm -hmm. didn't listen, um, but it's like you're sense of like relationships gets so warped that everything mm -hmm. is about either Arbon or fixing people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she's doing. She's just, it's look at like how you'd point out, this is all about me and how yeah. I fixed her. And she just yes. needs all these things. She's such a problem. She had to work so hard. This is why it's not that she's in a pyramid scheme. It's not that over 99% of people must lose in this clear fraud. No, 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 no. It's because she's got so many things, probably trauma and cycles yeah. of sabotage, all of these other weird MLM buzzwords. And then it's like the, the MLM adjacent, that 75 hard, like, it's just like re it's like another rank makers. It's like, you're going in with other people that a lot of them are in MLM. So it's just like this constant reinforcement outside your own fucking cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe she just needs her best friend back because her best yeah. friend is in a fucking cult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and also, I just want to say, like, um, in, like, self, in self-psychology, like, the development of the self, there's three things that we look for, which is mirroring, which is somebody listening to you and like reflecting back like you did, Julie, so beautifully in the beginning. <laughs> That's an example of, okay, you know, I feel, I feel understood and seen. And then um, twinship, which is like, we have, we have something in common. So, so you'll see this in, in a lot of the attraction marketing posts too, like wearing matching sweatsuits and matching things, all white or whatever, because it fulfills that twinship need of like, we're all alike. We're, you know, literally sending the dancing girl twin emojis to your, to your bestie in business <laughs> because you're looking for that twinship bond. And then the third is idealization, which is you're looking for somebody to look up to that is like, they've done it. They've achieved something that you respect and admire. So all of those real needs for development of self completely exploited in multi-level marketing. And this is everything I see in Arbonne attraction marketing is like to a T the exploitation of the development of self, which in turns in turn creates a pseudo self, a false self, which is pretending and feels ultimately a little vapid. And, and we all know how the story ends ladies. Cause here we are. Yeah. You know, and I think one of the things that really had a chokehold over me Mm -hmm. um, was like, as a woman, just the mental load that often we have a woman, a mother, a, like, it's not, I mean, men, women, everyone has a mental load, however you mm -hmm. identify, but typically in like the home, a woman has a strong mental load and it really felt good to have somebody tell me what to do or make yeah. decisions yeah. for me or I'm having a hard time knowing what to do. Let's see what my coach or my mentor or this, you know, this guru will tell me what to do because quite frankly, I'm so fucking exhausted from doing my 
900 reach outs, my live video every day, listening to 75 videos, doing 75 hard and working out for 45 minutes twice a day. Like, just tell me what the fuck is wrong with me because I don't have the time or the energy to figure it out myself. Like, mm -hmm. I understand that. Like, that feels good. And when you join an MLM and you have these people that are like saying that they're looking out for you, it, it feels like a sense of relief. Mm -hmm. I really do remember like this feeling of like calm at first before I got like, I went all in. Yeah. yeah. Like, wow. Like I, this is all laid out for me. Yeah. This is the blueprint. <laughs> yeah. I remember saying during COVID when my upline would have these like little, like right when, when it was like declaring a state of emergency and my upline had this like Zoom, like emergency Zoom meeting, like just hang out, have wine. I was like, I feel like- Emergency Zoom? Wait, <laughs> wait a damn minute. Wait, they called it an emergency Zoom? I think so. It was oh like- Oh my a... God, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> what was the emergency, pray tell? You, you ran like... out of fizz sticks? No, 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 no. <laughs> Like what? Okay, I'm sorry. I just think it's there was a, it was declared a state of emergency, so everyone was scared. Oh, okay, because with the pandemic. Okay, with the pandemic, I got it. so we had an emergency Zoom of like, like, come, young little chicks, into my nest of love, and I'll just make you feel safe. You know. So the emergency was the pandemic. I the emergency it. was like, let's have wine and be together because we're a okay. family. <laughs> instead of focusing on the negative these were things that really helped her to move in this version of her where i'm just so proud of her i texted her two nights ago or maybe it was last night and i was like i am just so freaking proud of you and i can see her spark coming back and i see her like her carly coming through again and i know that this next run that we do for nation um which is going to happen next month so giddy up stay tuned for the ride is going to be different because she is in a different place and she is ready to go all in on herself and i think we've wow. unpacked so many of the layers that we needed to unpack for her to really step into her power um one other thing i will say was actually i'm just going to share the live and you guys can have a watch um maybe this is something that you are currently experiencing within Arbonne or within your field wherever you are maybe it's even in your workplace or even just on social media where you're constantly following the same accounts and it's not making you feel good you're going into comparison you're thinking you need to look a certain way talk a certain way act a certain way if a page isn't making you feel good mute it unfollow it and work on you and we talk um okay. how much pressure would you feel if your upline posted a video of you know, she's going to go all in. She giddy up because this is happening. You'd be like, fuck, like there's no turning back now. Like I, she said she would and she did. That has to come, that has to come to fruition. I'm so fucking mad watching that, especially at the, at the end. I'm like, I'm just ready to, I'm like ready to blow like the volcano that Jen is, you know? <laughs> we gave Jen the nickname, the volcano. Cause when, when she began speaking out against multi-level marketing, it was like no holding back. It and was then so I awful. lied dormant for years. <laughs> yeah, you don't know <laughs> when she's gonna blow and it's always epic, you know? But it's like when she, this, whoever this downline is, it she will never be enough. She will yeah. never be um, uh, whole. She will always need to be fixed. She will always need to have this person tell her what to do. This is just creating this really fucked up dependency. That's what I see. That's what I was getting mad at looking at. Watching things like that too is when I look back at things that I am still working through and processing, like one of the big things is like the coaching clients that I did that to. And I already kind of spoke about this, but like in my Facebook memories, if I did like an interview on like Ray Higdon's page or um, even in like an Arbonne group or something, and it shows up in my memories with someone else sharing their story. And at the time, like I thought I was lifting them up. So yeah. it could be that she believes she's elevating this person because what she's the top, right? And so she's like bringing her up because that's what yeah. you get fed. Mm -hmm. Um you're right. That's a really good. I, right. It is so hard to like, well, at least for me, 
it is so difficult to forgive yourself for that. And like, mm -hmm. because you see the way the, like, that is disgusting. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying she's disgusting. I'm saying she's in a cult and mm -hmm. like, it's you. And there's this hierarchy of people mm -hmm. rather than just like, having that true connection there i don't really know how to say that other than like i just pray even yeah. though i don't pray <laughs> i just i hope that she sees that one day and i hope it doesn't hurt their friendship to mm -hmm. an immeasurable way like where where it's it just will never be repaired because it sounds like were they do you know anything about them? Like, were they friends before the business or? But, um, oh, sorry, it's, it's the, it's the power dynamic, like yeah. mixing in the friendship, so, you know, was she saying best friends with a power dynamic like that? Yeah. Mm, that is so sticky. Yes. So um, sticky. And, and that's another of the top three things that I would say, is a disaster within multi-level marketing is the lack of acknowledgement of the of the potential for harm that power in relationships has it's 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 set up in this way for a reason and it's harmful and if you don't know that then you don't you don't really know what's happening to you you know until you get out in psychoeducation and so on. But meanwhile, her best friend slash downline has a baby at home and yeah. And you know, Jen, thanks for bringing that nuance back into this because um, there is a really, really high chance that this woman is, I mean, everybody's brainwashed. They, it's just like to the degree of whether they, you know, there's the people that know what's going on and then they choose to keep going. And then there's like, mm -hmm. most people are just brainwashed, you know, and that's really important to bring back into this because even as a coach, even with like seeing this like really horrible behavior, there's really good stuff that was probably has been given to, because in cults, it's never, there's always this good, there's good things in there too. And it's often in the people. So whatever, you know, I don't know her cult identity, her real identity. There's like, there is that friendship. There is the, there's good things too. So mm -hmm. it, it kind of shows how there's that victim and perpetrator at the same time for lack of a better word, but it, it's just so yeah. messed up. Jen has to leave us. Um, and thank you so much for spending time and just adding your insight and your perspective. Um, when you were my coach in rank makers, you did help me. And um, it wasn't about multi-level marketing, but um, you you saw me for who I was and you helped me wake up and get the fuck out. So um, please have, you have the, like, share whatever you want with any with everybody here. Well, and you helped me wake up and get the fuck out. So there you go. <laughs> um, I, I, I do think it is important because like we had mentioned that there isn't, there, we don't have all the information. And so it, like looking at all these people talking about whatever company it is, it's like looking at it with a critical eye. And this is just, I did find a bunch of like journals and stuff that this is just what I've kept. I threw so much shit away, but truly what I, what the job is that is unpaid. I mean, First of all, it's buying shit like this constantly, but this is one that like, um, I believe Wade and Sandy s sell this. They are a top um, Arbon ENVP, e whatever they are, they're at the top of the pyramid. Um, oh yeah, there they are right here. There's Arbon VPs selling this to people in their downline, 90 day cycle to new habits. I did this whole thing. This was my d daily method of operation every day. 60 minutes of daily focus unpaid. So 20 minutes mindset. What are you grateful for? Um, gratitude, one minute meditation for two minutes, affirmations for two minutes, movement for five minutes, reading for 10 minutes, 20 minutes of relationship building, write down all the lives you touched today. 20 minutes of follow up daily checkoffs. Did you post on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn? Did you do a birthday acknowledgement? 
Did you do any back extra bonus activity, including training, audio, video, podcasts, etc.? None of it is like paid for activity. It's all busy work. This is just one. And then I had then so Donna Johnson is oh, no, no, no. like the tippy top of the Arbonne pyramid. I attended three of her retreats that she put on. She sold these. So these are people then taking advantage of their downline and selling product that Arbonne, that's not affiliated with Arbonne, right? So I purchased this and you can see, I don't, I don't know if there are names on there. So I'll, but I wrote on here, this is a different daily method. So then this NVP is telling me this, this NVP is telling me this. I'm buying it all because I know something's <laughs> missing, right? Um, so this is 20 minutes of personal development, at least three new asks, and then you're encouraged to do more, like if you want to grow. Follow-ups, PC, which is preferred client or um, client follow-ups, team member connection, re relationship building actions. Did you make a social media post? Review your goals plan your next three priorities for the day. Then, as if that wasn't enough, then Arbon had Rachel Hollis speak at our one of our events and we were encouraged to buy all of her shit. And so then I bought this and filled it. You can see, I wrote in this baby for like two years. It's filled to the brim with stuff. And then I joined Rank Makers. And I bought a 90 day journal, activity journal. And I, Ray told me that I had to, again, focus on what I was grateful for, celebrate my wins, write down my goals, write down the number of people I prospected, the number of presentations I did, the number of people I enrolled. So here, I prospected 131 people, which meant that that day I sent out 131 messages. I did two presentations which meant I sent out my link to two people that day number of people enrolled zero number of um teammates who reordered zero so that's the only time you make money is if you recruit somebody or you sell a product so you're doing 131 messages every day to send out two links and not make any money Oh, how did it feel doing that work? I do you feel like I can feel my body physically going back to that place of yeah, yeah, yeah. even in this live, when I talk about things, I feel like I'm so much more like manic when I'm in this boss babe, like trying to even unpacking it, I'm out and I still get so fired up about it. Like when I'm in my regular job, I don't talk like this. And I used to think that this was passion and I'm not saying I'm not passionate. I am passionate about helping people get out. And I do think you can get fucking fired up about things, but like, I can feel it in my body. It is like a visceral response of like, go, like charge ahead. It is and it. I don't think it's really who I am at my core. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I mean, you can see it. It's like, if you were to talk to me now out of, the cult of Arbon, I feel like I can just go <sighs> mm -hmm. like, and that feels like it feels amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I really have loved doing this again. Even if it gets me fired up, it's I, good. It's good. But thank you guys. Thank you. Man. Thank we'll we'll have to do it again anytime. Bye. <laughs> I <laughs> was religion part of your part of Monique. It was towards the end, or maybe it had been there um, from the beginning, but I wasn't aware of it. But I was really aware of it, but in uh, fall of 2021, towards mm -hmm. the winter, and then that's when I really noticed it. Mm. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't know that when I got recruited into a commercial cult that. I would also get um, recruited into evangelical Christianity. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Things they don't tell you in the beginning. So um, I just want to find this email where, because I, I in it, I, I was surprised I had forgotten about it. Um, 
where I am saying like, throw me a bone. This is what I do basically. And I was like, mm -hmm. holy shit. And there's no response to it. And I wow. know why it's because they of course sent me voice notes instead. So there wouldn't be any, you know, it'd be lost. Right. right. So I had, I was in a, a, a position. I can't see you. So I'm just talking to nothing. Okay. Cause yeah. I have this up. Sure. I, I was in a position called a wellness coordinator, which I've learned that actually the company is abolishing and no, and, and not a lot of people, somebody who's still in, st still in has told me they're abolishing this position. So this is a position that I have, which is basically a leg up. It's like getting extra leads. And when I, and I left for a period and then I came back, and I, and I wanted to get that wellness coordinator position back because I felt like it was the only way that I could possibly make this happen is if I had the extra help. Um, so I, I'm saying, and it was with the health coaching program that I got recruited through. So it was basically like I got recruited through actually trying to be a health coach. And then when other health coaches were considering being a rep for this MLM, they would connect them to me because I would be really good at flipping them into reps. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Does that makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> saying I, so they, they said, you can't have it back basically. And I'm like, I, I, I thought I was going to get it back. Then they were, it was a carrot being dangled. So then I was told to like lay it out why I deserve it. So this is the email. So I'm saying I found out about it through the health coaching training, which I joined. Um, this was my sponsor. And after I proved myself as a partner building a successful qualified business, I was entrusted with the role of wellness coordinator and received leads, which helped me build my business further. Of the team members I recruited on my own, one was this person who I have known for over 20 years. In 2015, when I was pregnant with my second, and I was doing this volunteer role. I'm not going to mention the organization. I decided something had to give and I let my upline team know that I was stepping back and I did not renew my distributorship. Doing, during the two years that followed, I stopped taking care of my nutrition and my health and my family's health declined. Once I began taking supplements again, I experienced a turnaround in my health and I decided it would need to be a priority and I renewed my distributorship. During my time away, my friend that I had known for 20 years was granted my former role and was given leads through and built her business up. And then this person and this person are example of two leads she was received, which have done very well. When I returned, I asked if my position could be reestablished when that team member had left. And I was told that I could be a this certain position, but my team and my customers would not be given back to me. Despite coming back at such a disadvantage, I did work hard to prove myself and I became the next position up in just over a year, building my structure up from scratch. In May, I was told that I, I would have my previous role reinstated. And after I submitted the necessary paperwork and copied my upline, nothing happened. A month later, I followed up and was asked to refill out the form again. I did and nothing happened. One month ago, I signed up for the master health coach training with the organization in order to invest in my business and lead my team and better support my customers. I also believe this is significant investment demonstrates my commitment as an ambassador. Two weeks ago, I was asked if I ever submitted that paperwork and I said that I had and I asked if I needed to send it again. And I was told it's good that it never went through because they needed to ensure that the person above me was making the maximum income possible. And if I was formally her wellness coordinator, I'd be taking some of those earnings. I would like to be asked for consideration in granting me the ability to formally receive the role which I was promised as a wellness coordinator. In this arrangement, I would receive customer and team member leads and I'm willing to put in the time and energy to support these people to the fullest. These individuals would receive world-class attention and support and have every opportunity become, to become raving fans of the company. I work full-time hours on my MLM business. I am at every event. I am at every team meeting. I run all my own events regularly, averaging four to six events per month consistently, and I open these events up to the entire team. I am actively engaged in personal development and continuing education. 
I have a consistent and engaging social media presence. I maintain a blog and a website and an email list. It is because of my web presence and my consistency that others on our team, especially other coaches, seek out my mentorship and example to model their business after. So-and-so is an example of these people. And recently asked if I could take to her. This person and this person have also sought out and joined my customer and prospecting group, which they actively participate and glean from. I personally put together a team calendar packed with events, many of which I personally lead and create all of the graphics for. I run vibrant and engaging online community that is a perfect place for team and customers to gain the support and inspiration that they're looking for. My business is steadily, consistently growing, and I am focused on becoming a leader, a leader, a leader, a leader, a top of the pyramid. This is not a side hustle. This is my career. I know that if a reciprocal arrangement could be worked out, it would be a win for everyone involved. I appreciate your consideration and support, and I know that the fairest solution will be offered. With gratitude, Brandy Hadfield. No one responded. When the set in again, and I plugged away, fawned, and did the absolute maximum that I could do, working upwards of 10 hours a day for another year all that work that's what the job is that's it's being ignored it's fawning it's learned helplessness it is being told that if you that your paycheck is a reflection of your blah 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 and you do it and it doesn't come and you feel to blame and you're proving yourself and proving yourself and bending over backwards and thinking i just haven't done enough i just haven't done enough that workload <laughs> all of that and it's just modeling that behavior for other people like within your organization and then people are looking up to you as an example and you're probably being held up as an example and at the same time you're like i'm still not good enough i'm still doing all this personal development and like it's just ridiculous yeah. i was always like following my kids around with the camera portraying our freedom lifestyle and that was part of my deconstruction was when I took time off social media and I read this book, which isn't for everyone in this cool, um, but it was called Simplicity Parenting. And one of the things that they were talking about is these kids growing up in this generation where their parents, like every moment when they're going to meet your eyes and you know, they're balancing on this log and they're like, well, I can't believe I do it. And they look over and they need, eye contact they need to be seen and they're seeing this it was like fuck that's every day that was like that hurts that makes sense to me that that's not optimal you know so i don't i try not to get in the shame spiral too much because ultimately there were obviously a lot of beautiful moments um but it's not a sustainable way to i don't think a sustainable or like wouldn't it <sighs> okay we're portraying this life of always being there but if we're being there to show it off to attract then it's got another layer to it that isn't true presence want to offer uh compassion for anybody who finds himself in in that situation and um the great thing about children is it, it sounds cliche but they are they're, they are resilient you can repair um and the best thing you can do is um forward because um something that i read was that the most important thing for a child is to see that their primary caregivers are happy. And if you are kind of stuck in that shame spiral, that's almost, that's almost worse than what was happening before. So just as best you can moving forward and, and, you know, I don't know. It's not, yeah. not yeah, in it's like then it's like at least teaching people around you that like well then this is what you do this is how you pick yourself up this is how healing is this is how you face like what it could be like an insurmountable obstacle where you know a lot of people still don't understand how dangerous multi-level marketing companies are and like now you've seen me do this it's like that like can be um helpful in healing instead of just being kind of like wrapped up in all the the horrible shit that we did when we were in multi-level marketing, you know, I know like um, when 
the work involved in doing this it and where you feel like i'm doing this for my family i'm doing this for this future and it's just it's for the cult it's for the most yeah. marketing company yeah. it's not even for ourselves because yeah. we will get up early we'll stay up too late we won't be eating properly or you know or be like disorder eating or there's it's so unhealthy it's so skewed because everything has to be like when jen was reading out um just all the the dmo just for our bond that didn't count all her other activities that, and duties her responsibilities and rank makers mm -hmm. and then when she was also we didn't even get into like when she was doing like um tony robbins as well mm -hmm. but i mean all of those the dmo activities that you're all this is going to like eventually lead to this success this place that this this we don't really know we'll write down all these um visions in our journal how we're going to manifest this reality how it's going to feel in your like dream house and how strong is the coffee going to it's all this wasted time and it's people around you like in your you know immediate family you know then your friends community it's not everybody's on board with that it's just this tunnel vision and mm -hmm. and it requires so much it just requires all of you Mm -hmm. that you don't you're, you're unable to even it's like you just got fumes left for everything else but it's just mm -hmm. so it's so anyway I, I don't know where I was going with that but there was another thing um this point that you'd made in here about discussing the pressure to maintain a perfect image my perfect image was about being consistent and to being like this is how authentic I can be like so it wasn't necessarily always having my makeup on or you know what what you see a, a lot going on now um, especially on Instagram it's more of like, um, I mean, but you do see people without their makeup occasionally, but it's, it was, mine was like, look at how involved these live videos I'm researching every day and I'm doing it to this formula and I'm having this call to action and I'm creating a giveaway, like a PDF or a worksheet with, you know, for three and a half years, I'm like, I'm going to show, this is like the perfect image of being consistent, working hard. Um, and being coachable, which means I always had to belittle myself in every video and always give gratitude and always give more than I will get back and give without expectation. That to me was being maintaining the perfect image. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting when, when I've seen your Boss Babe Julie videos, you you seem much more like, um, what's the word? Like I, I was the same way. Like he, um, I, I don't know what the what, what it is. Manic. It's like, <laughs> but it's also like this, like humbleness and this like goodness. Yeah. Like I'm so good. Um, yeah. I'm so obedient. I'm so grateful. I'm so humble. Um, and I just want to just pour my everything into you. <laughs> and you just want this you want to be with me because i'm gonna love you really good it's <laughs> yeah, exactly it one thing that i that i just want to say be aware of i mean there's so many different ways to recruit um but especially on social media which is really huge right now and a common one oh, i hate it when i see this one i don't know what, you, what you've been seeing lately but what i've been seeing for r3 i think it's called melaleuca and Herbalife is, um, and I mean, all of them, but these are just two that just this past week have popped up on my radar, are <clears throat> I've had this transformation. And so they're posting without saying what company they're with. The t I, I have an eye for this. When my, when my best friend was doing online dating, I would vet, I could just see, and I could have the same thing for MLMs. I'm like, no, no, no. I'll figure out in under a minute every time, even though they're trying to create curiosity. It's so easy to, if you, if you know, um, what MLM it is, even though they're not saying it and, and, and it, and people are like, wow, Julie's just had this great health transformation and she's just happy for herself. And I'm happy for her because I love her. Great, great job, Julie. I'll have what you're having. It looks like it looks like you're, 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 you know, and you're like, just let me know. Like, this is what's happened. I'm not on my diabetes medication anymore. I'm um, gone down two dress sizes. I'm blah, 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 blah. And I'm just so grateful. And it's because I started this program. So if you have any problems, just let me know, because I would just be honored to, 
lock arms or whatever. I have this group that I've started with my friend and we're just going to be sharing recipes and, you know, it's just like a little accountability and just a resource because I'm just so, um, I just have such a servant's heart <laughs> to help other people and people know you and they, and they think Julie is a good person. She always is there to help. She always, you know, she is a friendly person. So they believe, and that's where these, <clears throat> these commercial cults, use that's why they need the grassroots efforts of the girl next door the neighbor the the crunchy mama because they do have that trust factor so they just got to it's just a numbers game of recruiting as many of those people who even if they can just recruit a couple people each it adds up it adds up for the greater grid of the cult also the halo effect and i think you know people genuinely want to believe the person that they know yeah. So they're like, well, Julie's saying it, so it's got to be true. She wouldn't just like lie. But what we don't know is what's gone on in the back in the background is you don't feel like you are lying because you've had all this coaching slash indoctrination yeah. to make you believe that the ends justify the means and to, to coach you on skewing your story to be a blessing to others. The health transformations also just like the sisterhood vibes just like the partying and sister summer and you know uh, all those reels of like um just having a community that's like a that's a basic human need that we have for community and we have lost that um so it's a real vulnerability so that's the other thing to look out for anybody that's part of a supportive community doesn't feel the need to recruit people into their supportive community especially by trying to make you jealous. <laughs> so Kalika had a, a post recently on social media where she talked, I thought just thought this was such an excellent point so it needs to be amplified. She said, um, if you're ever being recruited into a multi-level marketing company, or yeah, any, any MLM, any group that you have to pay to play, ask them if they are aware of the harm that's caused to the majority. And if they answer one of these three things, run, run away. One, if they claim that the people, the 99% are haters, liars, quitters, or didn't have what it takes. Number two, if they refuse to acknowledge the experiences of all, so if they just evade that question. <laughs> uh, or three, if they say it's part of the process or something like, you know, a lot of people need to own their own business and run it for six to 10 years before blah, 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 or claiming that the ends justify the means. I thought that's perfect. I would, I would just love to hear those conversations because those are, that's going to be, you're going to hear one of those three answers.